Hello everyone and welcome. Today you will be finding out how to run successful preschool dance classes. Lots of tips and ideas for you to make those classes as educational, fun and engaging as possible. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. My name's Amanda and I've had a very long career in the dance world, starting as a professional dancer and having run a really big and busy dance school in Hertfordshire for 25 years. Moving through my dance career journey from dance teacher to licentiate to fellow to examiner. And now I work part time for the ISTD as head of faculty development, looking after all the new modern and emerging genres. I'm really passionate about inclusivity in the dance place and also how to include boys and girls in dance classes. But my main passion has always been the younger generation, hence my desire to create an engaging preschool plan. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about why I started Disco Duck. Back when I was quite a young teacher, I was approached by the council to offer some activities for the under fives. And of course, I was quite happy to do this, to run a dance class, and I thought it would be really easy, but it wasn't. I struggled to find appropriate music, to think of enough activities and props that would last throughout the dance class so that the younger generation were involved. There was a lot to learn. It was a very steep learning curve. And eventually I thought, I'm going to create my own package, my own music and my own resources and my own lesson plans that will create a class that children will want to come to, that is educational, has lovely learning outcomes and is really fun for both boys and girls. So it doesn't matter where you are in your teaching journey whether you're teaching preschool dance or whether you're considering it. Let's consider why we're doing that. Some people are here because they want some new, fresh ideas for their classes, which is always a really good idea. Other people are here because they want to explore the possibility of adding that to their curriculum. So why teach preschool dance? First and foremost, as a business, we want to increase our income stream. So for example, if you ran just one disco duck class or preschool class a week, your average earning per month would be an extra 200 pounds. So 200 pounds a month within your current turnover. If you're looking for more daytime work, that might be because you now have children and running evening classes are quite tricky, or you might be looking uh, to fill studio hours for those who own their own studio. The most important thing is that disco duck and preschool dance classes in particular will generate new dancers for your regular classes. You will always have a steady stream of children wanting to join your after school classes. Most importantly, because those preschool classes of a young age will have the parents and caregivers in that class, you will already have built a relationship with those people. They will know how wonderful you are, how great your classes are and will want to continue. And those young children will have found a love of dance at a really early age. And finally, and most importantly, it is really, really rewarding. So let's talk next about planning your classes. It's probably why a lot of you are here to get some new ideas to inject some new life and fun into your preschool classes. So let's talk about the consistency of a class. So your regular classes will have a warm up. They will have technique based preparatory exercises or drills. And you will follow on with some form of dance and performance and something fun at the end to keep them engaged. And finally, your cool down. So your preschool classes should be following this same routine. Equally, think about the content of your classes. 
What are those learning outcomes? Go back to the really basic foundations of dance. Can you include those basic foundations into your current classes? So let's think carefully about what those foundations might be. Focus, learning to listen, coordination, rhythm, timing, spatial awareness, and much, much more. So can you create an engaging and educational theme for each class? Parents, carers, and especially if you're going into nursery schools or normal schools, in fact, will be pleased to know that you have an educational underlying tone with your preschool dance classes. Have a look at the EYFS, the Early Years Foundation Stages. You will help to plan a really good class if you've got a good grasp on what that's expected of our younger dancers. Have you made sure that your activities are suitable for the age group? Is it achievable? Is it too much asking an 18 month old to skip across the floor? Is it too much to ask an 18 month old to perform a dance routine? What else can you do instead? Think about the music. The music is key for those classes. You can choose upbeat, catchy music that children can easily follow. Most importantly, if those songs define actions of any type, then you will be able to create a class where those children are instantly engaged with those action-based songs of the right tempo. Anything too fast might be unachievable. And finally, plan a balanced mix of warm up activities, sorry, warm up activities and cool down activities. If you're new to the world of preschool dance or really struggling to create an engaging environment that isn't too busy or chaotic, one of the things that you might want to consider is setting boundaries. When your new joiners start, have you got a really concise letter or email to give them, telling them what to expect within the class, but also telling them about the educational outcomes of the lesson, why there's repetition, and what they need to do in order to support their child throughout that class. Those are really important. People then have an expectation as to what they're coming into and what they need to do. This can be everything from clothing to footwear to um, not having phones in the class to joining in, which is really important if you're having a parent and caregiver within that class with those children. Make sure you're consistent. Does your class run to a routine that children, especially little ones, feel safe coming into? Routine is key with little ones. So if they know what to expect, they're going to be really happy and calm in that environment and not be overwhelmed. Have you got any challenges that need addressing? This is really difficult for us as dance teachers. It might be the fact that a parent um, is not engaging very well in the class with the child or the child is really struggling. So maybe think of ways that you can address those issues to make the class enjoyable for everybody else. One of the things that I am most passionate about disco duck classes, but also our dance classes when I have my dance school in general, is that everybody is welcome. Everybody can join in and everybody can achieve. And this was really important to me. So have you thought about activities that can cater to different learning styles and abilities? Young children are what we term mainly as active learners. So they need to be busy. They need to be moving. Um, listening is difficult for them. So have you thought about activities that are short and sharp enough that they will find really enjoyable and maybe want to do more than once? Think about your language and avoid stereotypes. And finally, celebrate differences. We are all here with the same goal to enjoy dance and to get fit. So celebrate everybody's style and shape and attitude because it's all part of that diverse world of encouraging a passion for dance.
Some of you will have already seen our PDF of our top tips for engaging toddlers in your dance class. We will be sending out a copy of this along with the recording of the webinar for you all to have a read and it might help you think a little bit more about what those classes can look like if you're looking for new ideas. Firstly, look for action inspired songs. Children of this age group are still learning to watch and copy the teacher. Music that intimates action can really captivate them. Keep exercises and dances to a maximum of two minutes. This is probably the amount of time you will be able to engage a toddler in one activity. Try not to pause between exercises. Have a playlist lined up on your device and run smoothly from one activity to the next. This is a great way to gain attention if things are getting out of control. Use the freeze technique. It recaptures attention and prolongs activities. For example, if you are studying rhythm and timing, ask the children to clap along to a funky song. Suddenly pause the music, calling out freeze. Then start the music and the exercise again. You can repeat this several times. And finally, use imagery or storytelling. Create an imaginative and fun environment that may possibly carry on a theme throughout this session. Play now for an engaging fun song example.
any questions you may have, please visit our website. You can contact us through our contact page there, or you can email us info at disco-duck.co.uk. You might want to find out a little bit more about our Disco Duck packages. They are really affordable and a great way to have ideas at your fingertips ready. One less thing for a busy teacher or dance teacher to plan. It's all there for you. Videos, music, resources, ideas and a great community to join. Please do take a look and let us know if you have any further questions. Thank you very much for watching and listening.